Tanong ko sa ating lahat mga kaibigan, mga kapatiran sa umagang ito is Are we men and women of convictions? Mayroon ba tayong conviction that is so strong like Peter and John as we continue our uh, devotional sa buhay ni Peter and John that they were called by the Sanhedrin ating makikita that without any doubt they were men and women ang mga disciples in the, in the uh, Book of Acts were men and women of convictions, lalo na si Peter and si John. Let us read sa ating talata this morning sa Acts chapter 4, verses 19 to 22. Ngunit sumagot sa kanila si Pedro at si Juan, Kung matuwid sa paningin ng Diyos na makinig muna sa inyo sa halip na sa Diyos, kayo ang humatol. Sapagkat hindi maaaring hindi namin sabihin ang aming nakita at narinig. Pagkatapos na muling bigyan ng babala, Kanilang hinayaan silang umalis na walang nakitang anumang bagay upang silang kanilang mapaparosahan. Dahil sa mga tao, sapagkat niluluwalhati nila, nilang lahat ang Diyos dahil sa nangyari. Sapagkat mahigit ng apat na pung taon gulang ang tao na ginawa nitong himala ng pagkagaling. When Peter and John were reprimanded not to preach Jesus, the name of Jesus, they said, whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge, for we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Actually, ang kanilang sagot ay hinamo nila ang Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin were the judges of Judaism. Hinamo nila to choose between God and to listen to, to God. Na sila po yung spokesman. Or May mili ba sila na magpatuloy sa kanilang desisyon? It's up to you whether you're going to listen to God or to continue what you are going to decide. It's up to you. Peter and John told the chief priests that their wishes were contrary to the God they claimed to worship. You know, you, sabi nila, you believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and all the patriarchs. Ngayon, you are going contrary to what he said because they are prophesying this Messiah. Thus, they were telling the lawyers that they were ordering them to break the law. Hence, they were telling the religious authorities that they no longer recognized their authority. From now on, they would follow God directly. Indeed, it was a strong decision and strong statement. Most Christians claim that they adhere unto their beliefs. Diba? But only few believers had the conviction of proclaiming Christ like Peter and John, na may courage na walang natatakutan. They were so committed that they were willing to suffer the difficult consequences for their decision. Now, let us take note that they were not rebe rebellious because they are willing to follow the consequences should the Sanhedrin will persecute them. They are not going to fight against the Sanhedrin in terms of rebelling, but whatever they choose, they are willing to suffer for it, but they will not allow that, or they will not suck them, or they will not shut their mouth, but continue speaking for Jesus. Sa araw na to, Peter and John had willingly obeyed Jesus, the Son of God, over the priests, the elders, and the scribes. I think this is a mandate for us na although the law of the land is to be recognized, but if it will suppress the, the our, our worship to God, our relationship to God, just like in many countries that worship is restricted, we must not succumb to such intimidation but continue to worship. We have brothers and sisters who are having difficulties in restricted 
countries because of this. But nevertheless, they were willing or they are willing to suffer to the persecution in such cases. Ito yung si pagsimula ng huge paradigm shift among the Jesus followers. Bago pa si Jesus bumalik sa langit, ito yung sinabi na sa mga disciples. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And we know that the word witness means martyrs. They are first-hand witnesses. They, what they have seen, what they have heard from Jesus, they are willing to die for him. They are willing to suffer for him. Actually, itong sinabi ni Pahin sa Christos, uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 isn't a command. Hindi ba? It is a statement of a fact of the movement of the gospel. Ang command ni Pahin sa Christos is that you might, you will receive power. You are going to receive power. And the result will be, you will become my witnesses. And this is the beginning. Later, Peter would validate the salvation of the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8. When they were persecuted, they was, he spread to the neighboring provinces like Samaria. And they preached and Peter confirmed the salvation of the Samaritans. And the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10, particularly it started in the house of Cornelius. John later will write his gospel and Paul would insist he has no choice but to preach the gospel also. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, he is going to have some travels, missionary travels, in order to preach the gospel to Asia and even to Europe later. So, ano ba yung implication sa atin ito? Sa ating panahon ngayon as Christians today? Ang tanong is, are we men or women of convictions? Are we determined to stand for the truth? Maski may mga consequences. Now, we are not asking for, for you know, we, we are not happy and we are not seeking to be martyred or to be persecuted. I, I don't think that's a, that's a noble um, pursuit na para bang isang tao who is full of bravado na sige bigyan ko Lord ng pangapakahirapan we cannot dare to, to say that to the Lord but the Lord allowed or will allow hardships and sometimes we suffer persecutions not maybe as intense as the disciples or the people in the past but we have persecutions maybe in our offices, from in our communities, and even our, in our families because we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And yun sinasabi ni Pablo sa 2 Timothy 3 verse 12, that if we are living as godly people, we will suffer persecutions. Like the disciples, do we value our eternal souls more than our bodily comfort? Do we value Jesus' will and to fulfill his will more than in any, anything else? To obey man's orders will be directly to disobey Jesus. Have we burned our bridges behind because we are determined to obey Jesus alone? Or may we be men and women of convictions? Sabi pa, we should be men and women of convictions that our convictions will hold us. Ang ating paniwala ay so strong. We are so convinced to it that we are not going to slack on our grip to it. We continue to hold on to it because for us, it is something we cannot just give up. So may God help us. May He will be gracious to us to, be, to become men and women of convictions, even today. Painon, salamat po your word today. Thank you that you reminded us through the life of Peter and John and the early disciples how 
they stood for what is right and how they stood for Jesus. And Lord, may the truth in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 will be true as we receive the power of the Holy Spirit will become also witnesses that the gospel will spread despite of hardships. Lord, whatever will be um, happening today, we trust, Lord, that you'll use these words, Lord, to encourage us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.